Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the World Class Championship Wrestling Review Series we're entering into the month of July 1987 and uh, we are in the dog days of summer for 1987 which we are just just over by a few months a year away from the end of the territory as we knew it but uh, we start with the 4th of July 1987 edition. Uh, lots of interesting things, although not necessarily things that um, people are going to like. There are some highlight packages that we normally don't see in the area. There are, which one of them is really well done, by the way. Um, and then there's a weird announcement, which I had to do a little research on because I didn't know the background of. Uh, Brian Adias and Steve Casey start off. This is not Scott Casey. This is a different fellow. Adias, obviously a big guy in the general area of the world-class territory over the last several months. Um, go behinds, arm drags, and arm bars early. Nothing really amazing out of this. And Casey is a relatively newcomer. Not to be confused with the dark-haired Scott Casey. Steve Casey is not a guy I know a great deal about. Good match, good enough match, but... Um, uh, Adias manages to continue his heel work here, and Casey fights from underneath, a couple of, you know, punches and the like. Nothing really major from him. This is a, meant, this is a match meant to be a showcase for uh, Adias, and that is what it becomes and does in its uh, simplest and uh, easiest of form. Now, we move f uh, through the match itself, and... Um, I would say Adias takes the majority of it. He gets a victory in, I don't know, just about six minutes, maybe, maybe a little less. Um, and that's, that's there. Certainly different video editing used here. Uh, they seem to st be starting to almost try to be treated and looked at like a national promotion. Of course, a few months after WrestleMania, the way you need to go. But in WrestleMania 3, uh, the way you need to go. Anyhow... Side rush and leg sweep victory for Adias. Kerry Von Erich comes out and announces that Lance Von Erich's name isn't Von Erich. What happened here after doing some research is that the Lance Von, the guy playing Lance Von Erich uh, for the last several years, about three years, uh, left the territory and tried to keep the name. And Fritz didn't want anything to do with this. He actually, I believe, in a couple of weeks addresses officially that the, the name is not true and that uh, he even talks about trademarks and patents. Um, so it's just a really interesting thing for a wrestling territory to do. Eric Emery and Frankie Lancaster versus uh, the Fantastics for the tag team titles. Um, I did not realize that uh, Lancaster, who I've only seen up to this point in in my wrestling journey as a uh, enhancement talent, even had the um, ability to be you know in a tag team program of this nature, uh, a tag off to uh, Bobby Fulton. Fulton is taking the majority of the match. Eric Emery, who is really coming into his own in the area. Um, has a good shooting interview on, on highspots.com if you if you like stories and such. Anyway, um, so a a diving headbutt by Fulton, obviously Rogers and Fulton together for a long time, several years, and they are I would say the fantastic. So one of the things at this point in '87, holding the territory afloat, at least in my opinion, um, you know the tandem of um, the uh, Lancaster and a and Emery easy for me to say got lost in the middle of my thought there um, I've run together with a mock bulldog kind of an interesting thing um, Rogers tends to break the holds down makes things as simple as can be um, you know the the fantastics cut the cut the ring off and um, you know, two count, and again, the Fantastics are doing a lot of a lot of stuff, very assertively. I would even say aggressively. Um, 
cut off the ring for Tommy Rogers. Rogers gets beat up for several minutes. Really good tag match for a team that I'm, I wasn't terribly familiar with. Um, if you like tag psychology, if you want to see that it, it proper tag psychology does not necessarily mean that you have to be like one of the famous well-known teams. This is a great way to show that. Um, the Fantastics do end up um, in a situation where uh, boy, boy Tony comes out and is a distraction there. Um, he, he watches his men roll out to the floor. Um, and, you know, that's kind of, that's kind of what's here. The, the heels do fall on and get a, and get a victory. Uh, we've got new tag team champions, Emery and Lancaster. So that's interesting in and of itself. Highlights of Ted Arsini doing powerlifting, uh, voiced over by Fritz von Erich. Um, it's really simple. Then the match that I called um, when I recorded, I think it was the last episode, Ted Arsini and Tony Atlas, yeah, not as good as advertised. I knew I called for it for a reason because it made sense to go there. By the way, Arsini is managed by Percy Pringle, um, but the... I called for it for a reason. Trouble is, <laughs> um, match is not very good. If you like uh, wrestle crap type stuff, worth going out of your way to see. Um, just they they clunk along, and Arsini tries to be a, an effective heel. Atlas, who doesn't need to be in there with a star per se, but needs to be in there with somebody who can at least bump around for him, because part of the strength gimmick is that. Uh, the need for someone to bump around for you um, does not get that with Arsini here. Um, I guess just what I would say is a release, almost power slam, and then a uh, dropping elbow by Arsini. Arsini goes for the bear hug, hooks the bear hug, gets it hooked in, and needless to say, that doesn't exactly go according to anybody's real plan. Um, meanwhile... Uh, Percy Pringle is not particularly happy until he throws his cane walking stick type thing in, and Arsini nails Atlas with it and manages to get the victory. Then we see Sweet Brown Sugar profile. Sweet Brown Sugar uh, is basically seen as a guy who is um, there for, for kids and there for the church and really put over as a, as a faith-based guy in case you're unaware. Um, I, I can't speak to whether it's true or not, but the narrative voice that the Von Erichs were devout Christians has played throughout the territory for the last several years. They seem to ramp this up even more in 87. Uh, I assume related to the suicide of Mike and maybe trying to rehab uh, the the image of the loss of a son of suicide. Remember, in the eighties, I don't think suicide prevention was as in was as in enhanced in society or in ensconced in society as it is thirty plus years later. Um, so that's that. And then we've got Len, Len Denton and Kevin Von Erich. Uh, Kevin goes for some some drop kicks and and the like. Denton, of course, known as the grappler throughout. Portland has worn the grappler mask. I don't know why they take the mask off him here, so that's interesting. Denton is managed by uh, Percy Pringle. Pringle usually falls into that alignment when a guy's not a good talker. Anyway, uh, Denton manages to cause Von Eric to go diving over the uh, side turnbuckle, gets an advantage there. Um, Von Erich gets caught up in the, uh, in the rope area. Uh, Kerry Von Erich makes his, makes his way out almost to stop, um, the interference factor. Um, you know, Kevin gets taken over, and with a couple minutes left in the program, it looks like Len Denton's going to get a victory, uh, and that does not happen. Needless to say, uh, the Iron Claw is utilized, um, doesn't get it all the way in, but gets it almost hooked in, and Percy Pringle is upset with the use of the Iron Claw, 
Obviously, the Iron Claw has been the hold for the Von Erichs over the last several years. Actually, last several decades, if we include Fritz, Fritz and uh, Waldo Von Erich. Uh, but anyway, uh, victory for Kevin there. And we will move on to the next in the July series. My goal is to have um, July and August up today. I'd like to do September, but not sure I'm going to get there. In any event, keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment. Till next time, everybody.